it's really not you against the market. It's you against yourself. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And there's so much mental psychology to it. We all learned this the hard way after, after doing this for so many years, making so many mistakes. You know, it, it really is just a battle with yourself, a battle with uh, really trying to get get yourself in control of your own mind. Right. So talk a little bit about that, what you've learned from from these uh, legends in the market. Well, I, I was going to say that to me, the best book on that, because it's in a whole nother um, subject that has to be mastered is trading in the zone by mark douglas so okay. i think i probably read that book more than any other book just wow. to be honest yep. because it instills the discipline so after you know after reading o'neill's book and then for several years i was just like discovered that yeah this is really you against yourself and the market, everybody makes excuses like the market's bad or I did bad because of the market. And it's it's not. The market's going to do what it does and you have to move with it or without it, whatever you're going to do. But it's your decisions. I've said this in the past, too. You know, I worked as a financial guy for, you know, many decades with other companies. When you work for a company, there's rules in the company. You know yeah. what you can do and what you cannot do. And if you break the rules, you'll probably get fired. Well, in the market, there are no rules. I mean, there's no boss except mm -hmm. for how much capital you have and how much you can maybe go on margin. But no one's going to tell you every day you can't do this or you should do that or whatever. You are running without a boss. And so you have to create rules that keep you in line or you're going to get severely hurt. So I read Trading in the Zone many times, and I was then I went back to O'Neill's book, How to Make Money in Stocks, or The Successful Investor, which I, I love that one. It's, it's so one. funny. I, I usually recommend that one. Successful Investor of the 24 Lessons, because it's yes. smaller, it's easier. It's easier. Kind of like what you were writing, you know, kind of one of your goals. It's it, right it's, to the point, and yes. the greatest points are in there. But I always kept going back to even How to Make Money in Stocks. I was like, how come he doesn't really talk much about the psychology side of it. And then if you read what he's done and studied him, it it hit me one day. I said, oh, you know why? Because he is extremely disciplined. Mm -hmm. So he creates rules that he doesn't bend or break. But most of us bend or break our rules. Right. So you can write them all out. You can repeat them a thousand times. And... In one of my books, I, this Gerald Loeb came up. This was in the 60s. He was talking to a reporter and he said, cutting your losses short is the, is the easiest thing to write in a book because he wrote a couple books. It's <laughs> the hardest thing to do to force yourself to constantly do it because you start to second guess yourself or right. I'll give it a little bit of room or whatever the situation is. But and there's no boss book, to tell you, you must. Yeah, <laughs> you must right. do this, right? That's correct, because you're your own boss and you can do whatever you want. But it, it dawned on me that O'Neill never talked much about that because his points were just like, look, you cut your loss at 7%. That's it. You just mm -hmm. do it. And he yeah. did it. So I was like, well, but a lot of people aren't disciplined enough to kind, kind of do that. Well, then why are you creating the rule in the first place? Mm -hmm. So he stuck to the rules. Jim Ropel, um, you know, you've talked to him several times. He's got on his monitors in his office um, 3%, 5%, 7%. Yep. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I told his story in that second book. And uh, I said this before, too, on a, <clears throat> on a podcast. You want an entertaining day, go sit in Jim Ropel's office while he's trading during the day. It's hilarious. <laughs> So, I mean, well, well, just hanging out with Jim well, Rope is yeah, entertaining. Just, I I, yeah, so, it doesn't matter I, what he's doing; it's going to be entertaining. So. When I when I interviewed him for that second book, I flew down there and I said, "I just want to sit in your office and watch. Pretend I'm not here." And he's just like, you know, he's got all the screens. He's he's like, "Oh, Mr. Big, hang on, I got to take this call." And I'm like, <laughs> "What do you ask? Don't ask permission from me." And he's like. Sorry, man, I got to do this. And he's like so fast and he knows what he's doing. But I was just, it's just been a very entertaining. But anyway, to keep himself disciplined, he's got it 
on his main monitor, 3%, 5%. I was like, what does that mean? Yeah. I take a position. If it drops 3%, I sell a third. If it drops 5%, I sell the second third. If it drops 7%, I'm out. Mm-hmm. No exceptions. Because he mm-hmm. took some massive hits early on when he didn't know what he was doing. So you have to live through these, I think. You have to you have to lose in order to know how to win type of thing. And you create these rules, but still people, we're still human. We're, we all bend them here and there. And that's what gets people into trouble. But getting your mind right means I'm my own boss and I have to create rules that I stick yeah. to. And it's up to me. It's not the market's fault. It's my fault if I break this rule. Mm-hmm. Did, did it get easier for you to, to sell at that, that 7% or sell at whatever your exit strategy uh, is it, in, in for your rules? Gets, I think it gets easier with experience. Yeah. You, you know better. I mean, yeah. I just said a couple of days ago, I just got rid of these three because they weren't working. They weren't down. Maybe one was down seven. I think the other was down four. Or, and I was just like, it's not worth it. It's not yeah. working. So why wait? Yeah. Um, I, I, you know, it's not worth it. So I think over time, the more you're in it, the more mistakes you made, the more you've lost, it forces you to get back on track and mm-hmm. it forces you to be disciplined in your approach. And yeah. look, all these guys, Minervini lost money for six years in a row. Ropa yeah. lost for six and seven years in a row. Um, Livermore went broke three times. Okay. Um, Loeb lost his first inheritance. He lost money that his mother gave him an inheritance. He lost all that. Baruch lost money his father gave him to begin with. These guys had to get stomped on. Darvis lost money for the first six years of his of trading. He didn't know what he was doing. He was doing the same thing. I'm taking tips. I'm reading mm-hmm. brokerage reports. Right. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And it's trial and error. It's hit and miss. And, and if you're going to continue doing staying in the market you better learn that you need some hard and fast disciplined rules you need the rules but you need to be disciplined enough to to abide by them and you also think that's always the difference right you know it's those the the great traders are the ones that do that kind of post analysis the introspection the wait this isn't working what do i have to do different you know there's those traders that say this isn't working it's the market's fault it's you know this person's fault and you know if i if i only had more money or if i had yeah. this yeah. then i'd be successful but it's I'm the not great not. traders that do the introspection and say okay what what do i need to do differently to be good at this well that example you just gave is a difference between somebody who blames somebody else for everything that goes wrong to them versus i think it's me yeah, I right. need to look inside and go, oh, I, I made this mistake or I jumped the gun or I didn't cut it or I wasn't paying attention to what the market was doing or I'm just it's just not right or just you can come up with a hundred of them. I mean, they're you know, it's all excuses. But if you don't get if you don't get your mind right to say this is this is me against myself. And patient that leads to patience, mm-hmm. the more patience you have in the market, I saw a tweet from a guy yesterday, somebody I follow, and he basically said to the point, I'm still sitting here. I've been sitting here since November 21st from 2021. And I was like, damn, that's now that's patience. Yeah, I can't say that because I kind of jumped into these stupid rallies and they didn't add up to much. But, you know, the best ones will They'll be patient and they, they don't bend and break rules. They have well, confidence. They well, have I would confidence. I would also say, John, that it's patience to really give yourself time to learn it. Right. I mean, a lot of times what I've That's told true. people in, in, in the past is the ones who end up getting this down and really, uh, really put it together are the ones who just hang around long enough. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that requires having risk management to survive a lot of those mistakes. And then eventually you might find yourself in something like a 2020 where things just work a lot better. They work a lot better. I mean, Ropel says this, uh, you know, he does this podcast and they're, they're really good. Uh, people should, should tune into those. 
he's what 57 and he keeps saying, you know, I'm going to be, I'm going to be doing this till I'm 97. So I got 40 more years. Okay. (laughs) So he said, okay, in 40 years, how many more bull markets am I going to, I mean, raging bull markets am I going to see? You're going to see quite a few. So if you even see 10 and he knows what to do, he knows what not to do. So he's going to, you know, he's going to be triple digits again, many times as, as right. long as those opportunities arise he's going to jump on them and do that and that's the best traders do that they wait they sit and wait and wait for the right time because you can trade yourself out of your account if you're for just sure. if you're if you don't know what you're doing you don't know how history works you don't know how the cycles work you don't know what the fed does how it influences the markets which is what we're seeing today how this downtrend is looking and you know it keeps getting kicked back with these moving average lines Mm -hmm. i mean it's just you know great markets have the 200 day line down here then the 50 then the 21 then the 10 right that's how it works okay that's not the way it is right now (laughs) you have you have new highs exceeding new lows on a daily basis in mid-May 2020 to September, the first week of September 2020, there were 79 straight trading days in a row where new highs exceeded new lows. There wasn't mm-hmm. one day in that time frame where new lows exceeded new highs. Wow. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I mean, if you can wait for that, like April 20, April and May of 2020, and th- the leaders were popping out all over the place. There were... In Monster Stock Lessons, I have 29 of them that all traded over a million shares a day on average and all moved over 100% in that year. 29 of them. And they all look the same, same patterns, right. same price and volume action, screamed ahead. So. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because a lot of times, you know, these opportunities come around, you know, uh, they, they, they come around regularly. So for people that think, Oh, we're never going to see a 2020 again. You know, maybe not a 2020, but you're going to see a, a great bull market. And, you know, that that's just kind of a given. And I guess, you know, what a lot of people have to realize is that your, your performance isn't going to go in a linear fashion. It's going to jump up. Then as long as you're protecting yourself, it's not going to do anything for a while. And then you're going to have these jumps up again. Uh, even Minervini. 2021, he had a great year where he beat right. the, you know, I mean, he, he was top. Well, he on won the, investing, the he, you know, yeah, 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 he won the National Investing Championship. And even that year wasn't linear. He was like, look, I made a bunch of my money in the first couple months. And then, you know, I made a percent or two for the next couple, you know, the, the, the next few months. And that just compounded <laughs> what I had. Yeah. It was just about not losing it, not losing the big gain that I had in the, in the beginning. So. Well, I, I featured him in Monster Stock Lessons, which came out earlier this year, because I asked him if he wanted to be mentioned in the book. And he said, yes. Mm-hmm. And I said, OK, so let me detail how you did this in 2021. You had 334 percent. I mean, you slaughtered it. I mean, it's, I mean, in a in a choppy uptrend. <laughs> yeah. What oh, happened yeah. was in starting in February and in March of 2021, sector rotation started coming in the big leaders of 2020 were already coming down yeah so you had this sector rotation coming in and breakouts would start and then they'd stall Mm -hmm. he saw that and he he acted on that so what he did was he tightened up his time frame Mm -hmm. like like a gerald Loeb did right in the in the 30s and Wyckoff used to do that in 1915, 16, 17. When the market was choppier, he would take, he would tighten up his time frame, still jump on these, ride them out for just a few days or a week or two, and then get rid of them. And then they pull back. That's how Minervini did that. He was in and out of, he was buying breakouts, but he knew they wouldn't last. So he, and he piled into them too. He took big positions and just did the turnover in his account over Mm -hmm. and over month after month after month. That's how he did that. Mm -hmm. It's not his core strategy, but his core strategy to me is I'm just taking what the market's given me. Yeah. And if it's that, if that's it and I'm in a contest and I want to win, 
I got to do what I need to do to win. Hey everyone, thanks so much for watching Investors Business Daily on YouTube. If you want to watch more videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing.